Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Brief Aquaria. Today's video is on the ColorView ICP analysis. I went ahead and I sent it out because if you follow me, you're going to notice on the previous videos that I'm having a problem keeping um, Monty's and actually SPS. I get them, I purchase them, I acclimate them, and after about, they start to peel out. And after about a month, they actually die. So I went ahead and sure enough, when I got the test results, there's four trace elements that are way low. And as a matter of fact, zinc is undetectable. So this video is more or less like an educational or an informative type of video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take you to the laptop and I'm going to show you when you receive the actual results, what it looks like. And then how can you tell uh, where there's uh, an issue with uh, some of the elements? So then also I'm going to show you when you maneuver into that uh, results, uh, you can actually move it to the top and it'll show you what the standard levels are and where you're at. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what are the products that I'm using to address the issue. So I hope you enjoyed the video and find it interesting. So let's take a deep dive. Okay, so here we are in front of the laptop. And uh, I'm under Google uh, Chrome right now as we speak. What I did is, uh, before I go in, uh, I'm going to go through all the steps and uh, what you actually uh, have to do. But first of all, I, I made it like a bookmark on top. So what I do is I go in. And this is the first screen that you're going to get. Now, of course... Uh, let me remind you that you do have to go ahead and create uh, an, an account with them. You know, so you're going to see this first and then on top, you're going to go get my results. Okay. Now, once you get my results, you're going to get this screen. And then, of course, right here on the left hand, you have the aquarium and the RODI. Uh, we're just going to go under the aquarium because, the, you know, you get two test tubes and you're supposed to test your RODI water and also your reef aquarium water. I'm good to go on the uh, RODI. So you're going to go to uh, aquariums and then, of course, Eddie Nasco. Nasco is my last name, 40 gallon. You're going to click on that. Now, once you do that, you're going to notice here that we have like a main screen and then a Scott a number which is assigned to you and you have to put on the test tube when you send it. So you're going to click on that and that's when you're going to get the uh, results. Okay. Okay. Here we are. So these are my results. Now, uh, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to show you what we're talking about here. Let me bring it up. Okay. Now, these are all the trace elements that are actually checked for. Now, if you noticed right here, uh, the yellow ones, these two and these two, those are the ones that, are, that uh, they're saying, you know, that it's problematic. I do have an issue with them, actually, because they are low. So we're going to go into one by one, and I'll show you how this actually ha uh, works. So let's go first to this one on the top. You're going to bring it up. When you click it, watch what, what happens. Okay. Now, when you go to it, it's, uh, it's going to tell you where you're actually at. So like for instance, let's say uh, this is cobalt. Okay, now here, by uh, their standard, by their, their standard, this is the actual amount that it should actually have. Now, what it shows here, I'm way below. You see how it shows there? So, I'm low on cobalt. Now, let's go to the next one. Around, right underneath. Zinc. Now, zinc, if you notice here, it's actually zero. This is the allowable amount that you should actually have. But as you notice, zinc is zero, so I have an undetectable amount 
of zinc. But let's I'll go back to the previous one. I thought I I show you. Okay. Yeah, going to cobalt, back to cobalt. I forgot to mention this. As you notice, this is the uh, scale. This is where I'm at. And this is where it should be. This is the value that you should have, but this is what I have. So you have the values here, and then you have a, a graph where I'm at. Okay, now let's go to the other two that I'm uh, low on. Okay. So this is iron. This is what you should actually have. So you, you have the values and you have it on a, on a chart. And this is what I actually have. So I'm pretty low. And then we go to the next one, of course, which is iodine. And this is iodine. And again, these are the values. This is what it should actually read. And this is where I'm at. And then when you look at it visually on a scale, this is where I'm at. So that I thought I'd bring to your attention. This is how this actually works. This is where I'm at when it comes to the four trace elements that I'm actually low on. Now, before I go and then show you uh, what I'm going to use to um, bring up these levels that I'm deficient at, I thought I'd show you something. Hold on. Okay, now this is something that I'm going to draw to your, uh, your attention, another feature, which is an excellent feature when it comes to this information. I'm using uh, iodine as an example. Okay, if you notice, it has the, like I mentioned before, it has the uh, amounts, um, the, the actual reading that you should have, and then you can also visualize it on a, on a scale. But notice something here. Okay, now over here, what you're going to have, if you notice closely, uh, down he, uh, on here, on the, uh, let me go with the mouse. Okay, here, where you see, uh, where I have the mouse at, Okay, if you bring it down, you're going to notice it's got a drop-down window. Now, on this drop-down window, I have it as a default. Their, uh, their, their reading, their actual, their actual measurements. But if you want to, if you look, you can see, like uh, what I was mentioning on the intro, uh, this is what I was talking about, that they actually have the actual measurements for all the different oceans in the planet. So, like, for instance, let's say you want to go to, uh, let's see here. Let's say you want to go to uh, Florida Ocean. Now, that's what, your, uh, what the actual reading you would actually get. Let's go to Fiji. You see? So, these... These readings, uh, this is uh, calibrations and things that they, this is Hawaii. You see how, how it shows how in Hawaii, this is what I got, but this is what it should actually be. So as you notice, not only is this uh, informative, but it's also, uh, here's another one, St. Thomas. I have this amount in St. Thomas. It should actually be that reading that you see there. Now, what I have it is, I actually have it defaulted. I have it defaulted to their, their suggestions, which is this. So, not only do you get, actually, a, um, shall we call it, uh, actual analysis of your water, but it's also a educational ocean in oceanography, because you're able to actually look at the different oceans of the planet and you're actually able to see what the readings would be, the measurements would be for each of these trace elements that you're, you're looking at. So now, what I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the camera, and I'm gonna go to my dining room table, and then I'm gonna show you what I'm using to address these four uh, trace elements that I have an issue with that are actually low. So hold on one second while I set up and get ready to do that. Okay, so here we are in front of my dining room table with a backdrop of the tank. So these are the two products 
that I'm using, I highly recommend them. I've uh, been very successful. As a matter of fact, Worldwide Coral and other uh, that I might be aware of, I'm pretty sure that they use the same products. So to bring up the trace elements, what I'm using is the Replenish. Replenish is an excellent product uh, when it comes to the broad spectrum of all the trace elements. So when you apply this, of course, it all depends. Uh, like you've probably heard uh, me and other people, don't go by my dosage. Don't go by, by what I'm saying when it comes to the amount that I put because each tank, uh, each tank, I'm sorry, uh, behaves different. So like I've said before, I know I sound like a parrot repeating, but I can set up two identical tanks like this one, the Nouveau 40. Same rock, same sand, same brand of salt, lights, you name it, and they're going to behave different. Just like uh, human beings, you, you can have uh, Siamese twins and they are going to behave different. They can be under the same environment and one might catch a cold and the other one might not. You know, so that's the, the rule of thumb when it comes to these uh, applications is don't go by what I say or what others say. Uh, just experiment and see the behavior of the animals. So in my case, replenish what I'm using it uh, in reference to this tank. And remember what I've said before. When uh, you read the instructions on any of these products, it's going to say, okay, for 40 gallons, 30, 100 or whatever. Okay, you have to take into consideration minus uh, mass. In other words, this tank empty is 40 gallons. But when you start to add sand, rocks, the animals is, is no, no longer 40. And of course, and the, the uh, equipment, protein skimmer, I have a reactor, and I can go on and on. So by what I've noticed, and more or less an average, what I'm actually talking about water volume in this tank is not 40, it's 30. So based on that, and looking at the instructions, and playing around with the dosage for me, and this is me only, 80 of 80s with Aquaria, what I'm doing is, uh, in my case, it calls to start uh, three mLs a week. For like, let's say, for one month. And then after a month, you, you bring it up to two mLs a week, but slowly. So, like, for instance, in my case, being three mLs a week, what I'm doing is, on Mondays, I put one mL. Of course, I turn off the protein skimmer. Then Wednesday, I put another one mL, and then Friday, another 1 ml and I'm going to do that for uh, one month. I'm going now into the second month of applying this. I'm sorry, the second week of applying this. Then when the month comes over and finishes, then instead of jumping to two, I'll put like uh, one and a half, one and a half and one and a half. And then the following month, then I'll go to two mLs. So this is an excellent product. I do highly recommend it. I'm not, I'm not being sponsored by uh, uh, Brightwell Aquatics or nothing. It's my own personal uh, advice, my own personal experience using this product. Now, uh, with this product, Replenish, it will replenish all the trace elements, but except iodine. Iodine is not included in Replenish. So that's when I go, where I go to the next product. I went ahead and I uh, got the uh, iodine also from Brightwell Aquatics aquatics it's a high um, uh, concentration of iodine and it's got a bunch of mixtures and all that that is pure and it's made specifically for reef aquariums now you're probably going to hear out there and i and is is i've been approached with this oh no uh, you, uh, you don't need to buy this product just go to the uh, local uh, pharmacy and get regular iodine and apply it I don't suggest that. Again, I do not suggest that. I know that iodine uh, in broad spectrums or in, in broad general conversation is iodine. It's a disinfectant and all that uh, for humans. But that iodine does not, has, does not have the properties that these iodines, specifically Brightwell Aquatics, by chemists and all the uh, procedures and the experiments that they do, that is tailored and is made for reef keeping. 
So this is another product that I do suggest and this is what I use. So due to the fact that Replenish uh, takes care and addresses all the um, trace elements except iodine. And since, as you notice on the chart that I demonstrated to you guys, I do have um, a low level of iodine by their standards, then I went ahead and I'm starting to apply iodine. Now iodine, uh, specifically this um, iodine that is made for uh, reef keeping is, uh, you know, the properties, the components, is, is very high. It, it, it's a high uh, amount of iodine. So what I'm doing is for this tank, and again, it's me and me alone, what I'm only applying is two, two drops once a week. So this video, I'm shooting it uh, today on Wednesday. So what I did is uh, only on Wednesdays, I apply two drops and that's basically it. When it comes to test kits, uh, Different test, test kits I, I happen to use, and I, I'm very loyal with uh, Salifer test kits for everything that, that I test. But even Salifer and Red Sea and all the other companies, to be honest with you, you really don't get an accurate, accurate reading when it comes to iodine. Because each test is made to target a specific type of, of property value of the iodine. So you aren't really uh, going to get an exact accurate reading uh, when it comes to all these test kits when it comes to iodine so what you should do and it's highly recommended is look at your animals like start very low and then start uh, adding drops or whatever you think that it'd be uh, necessary and when it comes to uh, iodine all uh, when it comes to all the soft corals and the LPS they love iodine uh, so like, uh, uh, let's say the uh, corals that I have here that are soft corals, every time I apply this, which just right before I shot this segment, I applied the two drops. When you look at it, they're very happy. They enjoy it. But on any of these products, do not overdose and especially the iodine. Well, there you have it. I hope you found the video educational and fun and informative. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and smash that notification bell. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing, thanks for watching, and from now on, as you might be noticing, I'm uploading instead of weekly, every two weeks. Until next time, bye-bye.